It's the I Can't Mom Today podcast with Heather, the new mom, and Vera, the <clears throat> seasoned mom. I Can't Mom Today. Hey, this is Vera and Heather back again with another episode of I Can't Mom Today podcast. Hi, Vera. Hey, Heather. How are you? Better than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Poor day Heather. five. With the flu, day five with the flu. How long has Baker had it? Six days. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, uh, he had to go to the ER with 105 degree temperature. Oh my God. Yeah. Like we were like, what is this? Yeah. And um, he was just so delirious and miserable and it was pathetic and I felt so terrible for him. And they're like, you could have given him medicine. I was like, if you, if he would take it. Uh, well, that's then, a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the, um, in the ER, they gave him some Tylenol and he was just like, opened his mouth like a little bird, like, give it to me. Oh my, and of course he didn't do that for you. No, he doesn't ever do that for us. And we're like, liar. Oh. <laughs> and so, um, but then when they gave him Motrin, cause they still couldn't get his temperature down, his heartbeat was 178. And that Ooh. was like really freaking, out, really freaking them out. Yeah. But, um, they gave him Motrin. And that time, I guess that Tylenol had taken a little bit of effect and he started with, he was like, no, I don't want this. So I was like, this is a kid we know. Yeah. Right. This is him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that you're sick. That it's really okay. sucks. It's my fault for not getting a flu shot, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw you on your, on your Facebook Live. You're like, get a flu shot. And I'm like, I didn't get a flu shot. Of I course, know. My son got one. He gets one every year. He obsesses over it. He's like, Mom, when are we getting my flu shot? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then Jerry got one, but he just got one. He got one like a while ago, whereas Luke, we always get his like in November. Mm-hmm. So today I'm really excited because one of my friends, Melissa Pagonis, is on the call with us today. And I was excited because I, um, she did some coaching for me for a little bit, a um, couple, yeah, a couple years ago. <coughs> and her and her family have a, a different, uh, like their work life looks different than ev- than what we traditionally see. And so I went home to and work on, yeah. yeah to bring her on and find out more about how they can't her you know her family made that decision and find out more about it um but uh, because i'm coughing i don't want to you know infect your ears <laughs> so i'm going to be uh, sitting back a little bit in this interview i'll be listening the whole time and piping in here and there but for the most part i'm going to stay out of it <laughs> yeah oh you poor thing yeah plus Sorry. too i don't you don't need to strain yourself either yeah. <laughs> so no, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so Melissa, um, tell us about your, like what you do, who you are, um, your coaching. I, I know that's your side hustle essentially, and you have a real <laughs> full-time job. So you do a lot of things and just, can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> my day job is to be a compliance education manager. So I work in learning and development um, primarily during the day. And then, like you said, I side hustle as a life and development coach, which is my true passion. And I hope down the road to one day make it my full-time gig. But um, yeah, that's what I do. I life coach. And I, I love working with women primarily who are feeling stuck in the workplace, especially if they're in a toxic work environment. Uh, so does most of your coaching focus on that, on their professional lives, or do you do any like life coaching for the personal life too? Well, it's sort of all tied together, right? So personal lives does come up, but a lot of the women that I work with are, do initially come to me because, you know, they're feeling stuck um, in their job or they're feeling challenged or they're going through a difficult situation, but it always, always ends up you know, going into personal life, which is why it's called life coaching because we coach the whole person. Gotcha. Okay. Because I've never had a life coach. So I'm not sure you hear that term and you're like, okay, that's great. Are they going to yeah. clean out my cabinets or what's going to happen here? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like what is that about? Yeah, exactly. Like It's, what it's a little life? bit different. Yeah. It's a little bit different than, you know, where therapy, you know, looks at kind of the past and, and going back and resolving things that happened in the past. Life coaching is more focused on the future. So defining the future and setting goals and, and then tackling them with action plans. 
Okay. So we know what you do outside of the home. And one of the reasons that Heather wanted to have you on, and I think it was a fantastic idea because like Heather has had the more traditional experience so far, um, having, you know, being married and she has her child Baker. And I was actually a single mom. I didn't marry my husband until um, my son was six. So that's a little bit less traditional. And then your situation is basically your husband is, is like Mr. Mom, right? Yes. <laughs> so did he, well, I guess, I, I, I guess the best way to go about this is how did this happen? Like, how did this come to fruition or how did you guys <laughs> get to this point and, and feel free to give us the whole story? Sure. So, well, so we have three kids they are currently eight, six, and four, and he wow. stays home full time with them. He does have a part time job where he works about 30 hours a month, um, gets him out of the house, keeps his credentialing up. But basically, what happened was <clears throat> I don't know if it was ever really planned for him to be a stay at home dad. It, it sort of just evolved into that. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was pregnant with my first he was in a sales job and he was making pretty good money in sales and he was miserable. He hated it. Mm. And we were fortunately in a position where he could quit and make a complete career change. And so he went back to school. He um, started working in a nursing home because he wanted to get into, um, you know, the medical field. He wanted to help people. And so he thought for a while, you know, how can I get into that? So he went into um, a nursing home to get the bedside experience. And then he got his CNA. Um, And in fact, he took the CNA, the exam, the day after we had our son. So he got up in the morning and left and went and sat his exam and passed it. Um, And then he just, he decided to leave sales because it just wasn't fulfilling for him. And so he was working in this nursing home um, for minimum pay and, We had my son and he was going to school and my son was in day, was in daycare through a family member. We we never put him in full-time daycare, but my family member was watching him. And then it just got to a point where um, it just, you know, his hours started to get cut and he just started staying home more and he ended up just staying home. But he's kind of always had this, um, side gig as a surgical tech. And mm. so he works very part, part time just to keep up that credential and get out of the house. But other than that, he's home. Wow. So that was after your second child was born? That was, um, so he went full time, you know, before our second child was born. And I mean, full time at home Okay. before our second, before our second child was born. Okay. So he's been, he's been home for almost seven years. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So that's a while then. Did he, yeah. um, I mean, I know it just sounds like it kind of happened organically, I guess. It did. It really mm-hmm. did. And it, it made sense because, you know, I was the breadwinner and I had the income there and um, daycare is so expensive. Oh, you're and not it just kidding. Got to be, <laughs> yeah, it just got to be where, you know, because he was starting over in his career, essentially, it was just kind of a no brainer, you know, like you're either going to work and the kids are going to be in daycare and that's what's going to cover our daycare cost, or yeah. you can stay home. So yeah. he stayed that's, home. that's really cool because I mean, I know things have changed so much just since I had, you know, my son's 17. So it's since having my son, like I had to, he's at the, he's at the, point where we're going to start getting him into a regular primary doctor, but the last visit or two, we're just taking him to his pediatrician because it's the same office he's gone to forever. So I'm in the pediatrician's mm-hmm. office with him a couple months ago and, and looking at all these dads with the babies, you know, bringing them to the doctor's <laughs> office. And I'm thinking, wow, when my son was a baby, this was so not what it looked like. There were very few dads, you know, in the, in the waiting room. It was mostly just moms and and I think that's such a short period of time for things to change. And I was just thinking, so if your husband's been a stay-at-home dad for seven years, I mean, things that are had already started to change probably, I would think, even in the last like 15 years or so, I'd imagine, depending on too where you live and everything. But um, did you feel like, or do you, does he ever, or did he ever feel like 
anybody kind of looked at him sideways for staying at home, like he's less of a man because he's not making money and he's not out there and that you're making money or, you know, any family or fr- friends or community members ever, does he ever feel that way or you ever feel that way? You know, I, I imagine that this question was going to come up and, and I've been kind of thinking about it and I even asked him for his perspective on it mm-hmm. because the answer was, is no, like no one has really ever looked at us sideways or <clears throat> had a negative comment or a judgmental comment. It's more, um, it's different in a way where he tends to get a lot of accolades. Mm. Like, um, like, wow, you're a stay-at-home dad. That's so amazing. Or, oh, you know your, you know your kid's shoe size. How do you even know that? Like, like he gets that a lot. Or, um, what do you mean your wife doesn't cook? Oh, <laughs> like, like God. things like that. So yeah. we get a lot of that. But for the most part, it's a lot of people seem to be really supportive of it, and really wowed by the fact that he stays home. That's one side of the coin. And then the other side of the coin that he gets quite often, and the best way to explain this is with an example. So, and it kind of goes back to your pediatrician office example. So the most recent example, and I have several of these, but I'll go with the most recent one. Yeah. You know, he took all three kids to their dentist appointment a couple weeks ago. And he goes to the counter and he's checking in and the woman behind the desk goes, okay, dad, what questions does mom have for us? Oh, wow. Yeah. And so he, you know, he got, he was irritated. I don't blame him. And he says, you know, and I fell for him, right? So he's like, what do you mean? What questions does mom have for you? Like, I'm here. I scheduled my kids appointments. I'm, I'm here with my questions. So he gets some of that. Mm. Um, another example is, you know, he got it at church last week was the kids made these little placemats. And when he was picking them up, the woman says, oh, you know, I told your kids that they could use this placemat. When mom makes lunch or serves dinner, they put it on the table. And your son told me that your mom, his mom doesn't make lunch, that you make the lunches. And my yeah. husband's like... Yeah, Uh I do. And she's like, well, I guess I need to check myself and think before I speak. (laughs) Wow. I think it, I think it's like, he just doesn't get uh, the credit. Right. And yeah, I don't think it comes from a place of people being rude or ignorant. It's just the way we've been conditioned Mm -hmm. as into, into gender roles and whatnot. And so when they see something that doesn't fit that, it's like, oh, wow. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right? And yes. for him. Yeah. For me, I can totally it's a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. No, That's go, get, go ahead. What are you gonna say? <clears throat> well, I was gonna say for me it's it's a little bit different and I don't necessarily get the accolades. I I'm sort of met with silence <laughs> and awkward an awkward silence. Hmm. Right. So and then it kind of leaves me to feel like, hmm, like to fill that void and wondering, you know, what are they thinking? Like, oh, I guess I, you know, I, I can't even verbalize it. So if someone says, you know, like, oh, you know, what do you do? Or what does your husband do? Well, he's a stay-at-home dad. Oh. oh. <laughs> and then it's kind of like, I don't know what's going on in their head. And quite honestly, a lot of times I don't care. Well, yeah, there's that. I, mean, is, I think I'd rather the silence than somebody saying something rude like, oh, you are the parents of the family or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't get any of that. I have never gotten any of that. Good. Well, and that's good at and least. And I don't think my husband has either. No. No, yeah. on the flip side, you were saying how people are like, oh, you know, to your husband, that, oh, you know your child's shoe size, da, da, da. Um, I think for do you think that he knows more about your kids than you do? Essentially like, you know, the little things like, Oh, they're this week, their favorite snack is this, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Because he's there. He's, mm-hmm. he's there. But, um, it's sort of like this weird, it's sort of like this weird, I can I don't even know the word. Like it's sort of like a weird line that, working moms with stay-at-home dads walk because I don't want to, 
I'm not about like, oh, you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a working mom, but then it's almost like there's this third group of working moms with stay-at-home dads because I I look at parents who are both working and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how they do that. Like, I don't know how they both get up, get them their kids out the door to three different places and then get themselves to work by 8 a.m. Like, I, I can't relate to that because I don't have to worry about that because mm-hmm. I get up, I get myself ready and I get my kids cereal, you know, and then my <laughs> husband takes over and then I'm out the door. And so I can't imagine the extra stress in the morning of that. Mm-hmm. But then uh, still a lot of the parenting responsibility, like the, how do I say, the caregiving role still falls on me in the evening and on the weekends. Okay. But it's still very, it's still very different than I think a working mom who's trying to balance working kids and a, and a spouse or a partner who works full time mm-hmm. too. Well, I, I think that, that, that oh, absolutely. I think definitely that's a completely different dynamic. And I was thinking that, you know, of course, when I was a single mom and I was working, you know, that was, I was doing everything. And, but uh, Hey, when, yeah, <laughs> you had some. Help. I had some help from Heather, <laughs> but um, you know, the thinking about that where both both parents are working, and like you were saying, like everybody's trying to run out the door and and get their kids out and get them fed and get everything taken care of. I still think ultimately, then the overflow, no matter whether the wife is making more or less money than the husband, I think the overflow is still expected to be taken care of by the wife. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's and, where and, the you double know, standard point, comes like, in, you know? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I, and I think that goes back to gender norms and what's expected and what's been part of our culture, right, is mm-hmm. caregiving as women's work. Mm-hmm. And, like, we still have a long way to go, but... Yeah. I definitely would, you know, see major improvements and in just in just the way men take ownership, even in the corporate world of caregiving responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So like I had a senior leader the other day cancel out of a meeting because his daughter was sick and he had to go and get her from school. I've never seen men be transparent about that before. Like that is awesome that you are leading by example and showing. And I think as women, we, we have to hold men and, and our partners accountable because mm-hmm. they are fully capable of doing it. Yes. Oh, exactly. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they really are. And that's, I have a, like a really good girlfriend and she has, a, a, she's basically the breadwinner, but the husband also works full time. Um, but she still insists on, doing everything. You know, she does all the laundry, she does all the cooking, she does, she takes care of all the school stuff, all the, the medical care stuff and everything. But at the same time, I've tried to tell her a couple of times, I'm like, just let your husband do it. She's like, but he's not going to do it right. Mm-hmm. Or I'm not going to like the way he does it. Or it's mm-hmm. going to drive me nuts if he does the laundry and then he leaves it in the laundry basket instead of putting it in the drawers. And I'm like, girl, you're killing yourself. And then you get mad at him that he doesn't do anything. But then I'm like, you've got to just let go of some of that control. And like you're saying, Melissa, he is capable. Yeah, maybe he's not going to, you know, like hospital corner the bed sheets or whatever when he (laughs) makes the bed. But he can still do it. And you've just got to kind of like, like my husband does the laundry. Part of it was because he didn't like the way I did the laundry. So I finally was like, you know what? Okay, you go ahead and do the laundry. He does the laundry. So I'm like, awesome. Yay, I got out of that one. Granted, <laughs> we have black and white towels and now they're all gray. Ugh. But <laughs> mm-hmm. it's okay. I've just learned to let go of that. And hey, I've got a husband that does the laundry. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm pretty good at pushing stuff back on Brad as yeah. often as possible. Because I, I mean, I do the cleaning in the house because mm-hmm. I am very thorough. And mm-hmm. Brad will, I don't know like pieces of lettuce fall on the floor. I'm like, did you not see this? Right. And he's like, no, I'm like, are you really? <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, it's green. So, I know. I'm like, you didn't notice she dropped it. Nope. <laughs> and so I do all the cleaning, but he does all the cooking and shopping for groceries. Like I can't even tell you the last time I went grocery shopping. Yeah. It is nice. <laughs> nice. I hate grocery shopping. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I think you make a good point because, you know, there was a part, there was a, there was a time, I remember it very vividly, where I had to sit down with him and we had like have like a crucial conversation about, okay, this is early on, maybe like in the year two of him staying home. Mm-hmm. And it was, it went something like, okay, listen, I'm working full time. You're staying home. I want you to imagine if the roles were reversed, what would you expect of me? <laughs> right? ah. You know, what would you expect? And it was, it was kind of taking him through that journey of like, well, when a woman stays home, these are the things that get done. Like we, he really just didn't kind of think that way. And it was after that conversation where, you know, he really stepped it up in terms of like, he does all of the laundry. He does all of mm-hmm. the cooking. He does all the grocery shopping. I still do the bills because he doesn't enjoy doing that. But, you yeah. know, you know, he does all of that stuff. He does, you know, like getting the kids dressed, laying the clothes out, getting them off to school and but it, cleaning. He's still kind of like man cleans. So I come yeah. in and do the deep cleaning. Right. But <laughs> that goes back to the point of like, you have to let go and recognize that like, yeah, he's going to do things differently than, than you would do, mm-hmm. but it's okay. Yeah. It's different, right? It's not going to kill you. <laughs> right. Like it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna cause a big issue. Like for right. one thing, one, one thing he would let is our, our you know, our little one, our youngest one mm-hmm. nap on the couch. It would, that drove me nuts. Like, no, she needs to be in her bed. Mm-hmm. Well, really did she need to be in her bed? Some yeah. people would say, yeah, she needs to be in her bed, but that was something I had to let go. Yeah. Otherwise it would have drove both of us nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in the grand scheme of things, she's not going to be emotionally, you know, uh, messed up because she takes naps on the couch. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, it's the goal. I, what does it look like when all of your kids are in school, like in formal school, or is he homeschooling? <laughs> no, he's not homeschooling. I was going to no. say, praise the Lord. That really is like no. magic. There's no way in hell I could do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so the plan is, you know, he, he's kept up his credentials as a surgical tech and he eventually would like to go back into that. But I don't, I don't, I don't think he'll go full time ever again. Mm. Not until our kids are older, just because we're finding like, there's a lot of carting around kids and mm-hmm. getting them off and extracurricular things. And like, yep. someone's got to be there to do all that. So yeah. the navigation, the logistics of it, we don't really see him working full time while our kids are young at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The mom taxi thing. Like once my son, learned, you know, got a car and could drive, I was like, holy crap, I've got so much time on my hands. <laughs> like, this is yeah. really weird. <laughs> you know, he right. could take himself home from wrestling practice and himself to his cello lesson and blah, blah, blah. You know, he can take himself to his friend's house. Thank God. <laughs> so, yeah. That whole single parent category is like a whole nother. I, I don't know how single parents do it. Really lots don't. of wine, lots of wine, <laughs> <laughs> and help from friends, and for sure, and yeah. you know. So it, 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 but yeah, I definitely, even on myself, I look back and I'm like, holy cow, how did I do that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, well. Plus, being younger, you know, I was in my 20s, so I had a lot more energy back then too. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Melissa, is there any in, advice that you can give to the listeners about? Um, Convert or hurdles or anything that you had or you, that occurred when I mean I know you t- touched on one where you kind of had to sit down and discuss what it would look like uh, and that was really great information because I think and the way you phrased it even mm-hmm, like I would have been like exactly. what do you what would you expect from me if I did this? yeah exactly yes <laughs> yeah it was a it was a very crucial conversation right. Yeah. Um, I just think, I think the most important thing is setting the expectations, right? And, and saying like, if we're going to go into this dynamic, you know, what does that look like? Because for the first two years, we didn't, we just kind of, you know, we were just winging it and it yeah. wasn't working for me. And it wasn't until I sat down and we had those conversations, 
you know, about what it looks like and what the, our expectations are of each other, mm-hmm. um, it didn't get better. And the other thing, too, that I had to work really hard at, and, and he will kill me for saying this, but it's the truth, is um, I had to accept that my 100% mm-hmm. is... Well, how do I say this? His 100% looks like my 60%. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. when he's give, when I'm giving 60%, like that my 60% effort is his 100% effort. And I can't explain that any other way than he does the best that he can do with what he has. And I cannot be overly critical of that. I have yeah. to be accepting that he's putting his best effort forward and that he's trying and then he's navigating it the best way that he knows how and he's doing a really good job at it and I need to be supportive of that even when I think that's not how I would do it or I think he could give a little more effort here right it's sort of checking myself Mm -hmm. yeah because I I can totally see that and understand that and and see how it would be very easy to slip into that world. Well, if I were doing it, I could get those 10 things done in the time it took him to get six, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff would go through your, your mind. And mm-hmm. I could see where if exactly. you came at him like that, that he'd be like, screw you, man. Exactly. <laughs> I'm busting my ass over here. <laughs> right. Right. So. Like he gets his, his breaking point is different than mine. Yeah. And his stress tolerance is different than mine and he gets overwhelmed when there's like a lot of things going on where it would just kind of you know flow for me not that I don't get stressed out or right and great but you know and the other thing I had to get over was um my dining room table being the landing point for all unfolded clean laundry (laughs) yeah (laughs) the Uh. formal dining room is just the place where he dumps all the clean laundry and that's Mm -hmm. his station (laughs) where he folds it yeah okay i could totally see well when he when he folds it right (laughs) (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. totally see that have to let some things go Exactly. I always say that it's just roommate stuff. You know, you got to get over the roommate yeah. stuff. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm sure that I do some some things that are annoying to my husband. You know, not very no. nothing really, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, well, you got any other questions, Heather? No, but I do want to say that Melissa, I we met on a Facebook group with other moms, and that's how I got to know her a couple of years ago. And I can't, I don't remember how it happened, but anyway, she coached me f- through a few months, and um, I we're friends on Facebook as well. And just seeing her family and like they they just are so awesome. Like, and I don't know if this is like totally Instagram life, you know, that like we talked mm-hmm. about where it's just highlights, but like, it's, they're so cute. Like their kids are adorable. They go camping. They do all these like fun activities. And I'm like, Aww. we sat at home all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> definite goals. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa, for coming on with us. Yeah, thank well, you. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, if anybody is, you know, thinking about making a leap or changing and wants to network or talk about it, I'm, I'm happy to jump on the phone and chat. Cool. Give awesome. some insight. And we'll give you that information in the show notes. Below. Yes, for sure. All right. Until Great. next time. Next time, oh, don't forget, I Can't Mom Today podcast oh, yeah. at gmail.com. I Can't Mom Today podcast on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook. Yes. I came on today's podcast. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Feel better, Heather. Bye. Thanks.